weeks since they scrimmed, I would kind of throw all of that out the window and say like, hey, okay. this is a this is brand new. Like they've both learned from this qualifier, you know, from their wins and their losses. So hmm. uh, they've both made a lot of adaptations to kind of their mm, their idea of how to play Dota at the moment. Oh, so uh, there was the opener, right? The question was the Marana or because if you take Marana, they're going to take Luna probably in the two three. And then yep. you don't have Terrorblade to counterpick, right? So yep. they're just staring right away at the Knicks to just say, like, okay, well, let's see what your Luna does. At least we have one decent answer to it uh, at all stages in the game. Oh, yeah, Fada has played Knicks, I think, twice so far this tournament. That's kind of been his go-to <laughs> besides the Abaddon. And they, yep. take the, they take the Potom. They take the Naga for the combo. Should they Luna? um should they or yeah they they could if I they pass... wanted they'll probably have to because it, it's gonna yeah, get banned that i mean that's got to be the question here right is like do we want the luna yeah also like if you don't want the luna then you may have to ban it yourself too because like og has the first pick out the second phase so they could yeah. ban i mean terrible it's already gone so yeah it, if if you really want to get that carry right now you could I personally prefer taking like a hero that could potentially be a mid laner or an off laner in this spot, but that's kind of been the meta of this tournament is like pick Lunar or Terrorblade and yeah. do your thing. I think they yeah, are at a living. point where they're they're just like so strong that I'm confident that my safe laner is going to get like they should get something out of this game. Yeah, it's not a free win, obviously, because no hero in Dota is like that, but TP and Lunar are just on that other tier at the moment. Yeah, most definitely. I just I I'm getting like a TI three flashbacks to EGM playing support Naga and just like <laughs> running around netting people and setting up for arrows. Uh, we we saw the Naga support, of course, uh, in the previous game, and it worked out great. The songs were uh, were re part of the reason why, for example, Milan uh, chose uh, No Till as his MVP for for the game. Is it worthy of first pick? That's my question because we've not seen it at all, and and here it is, first pick, Trent. That's unusual. I mean, it's flexible. Uh, it's a uh, a real nuisance in terms of like the vision game you can get from it too. It doesn't have to be uh, the support. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a five necessarily. Uh, it can also be like the four who like rushes the hammer on the earlier end. So there's multiple paths you can go for with it as well. I mean, we know Sumail's got uh, the skills to pack to uh to back up the illusion heroes. So. Uh, I, I can appreciate that. It's game one of the best of five, right? Start with something sure. that's a little intimidating. Yeah, I've also seen uh, Naga Siren be played as a three position, and yeah. it can also be obviously a, a one. So it can, it's really flexible what it does give your team, especially versus the Knicks, which is the only hero that they saw when they picked it, is it kind of gives you that ghost push is the term I like to use. So it's you're able mm. to keep waves pushed without actually exposing your real hero. And that's generally very good against Knicks Assassin. Um, because he wants to catch heroes as they push those waves, but illusions are are not his favorite thing. The they zoo, are yeah. not. The zoo, you know, zoo and illusions counter Nyx for sure. But unfortunately, actually... zoo meta has kind of died with the with the with the death of Necrobook. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like it was just such a big part of the game for so long, and it, then it just went Fair. bye bye in one patch, just out of nowhere. No oh, hints, God. nothing, just. Necrobook has been removed. <laughs> no warning whatsoever. Didn't get a couple last games in. It was yeah, just exactly. gone. Yeah. Sad get it times. Out of here. All right. So you got a Luna on your team. Uh, should, should you worry about batting out the Shadow Demon at this point? Uh, yeah, well, for, both, play, but for both teams. They didn't do it. Not I mean, a bad suggestion. Soxa does like Shadow Demon quite a lot. However, that would lead to them kind of committing the Naga or Potom to a core position. Mm -hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised to see Topson play some, some mid bottom. Well, or mid Shadow Demon. He's done that before, too. Oh, God. Yeah, that, that is not good. We've <laughs> seen that. <laughs> that's a good meme. That's, he may that's be good at Shadow Demon, but that hero is not a good mid laner. <laughs> well, it's game one. You never know. He's, uh, they've definitely the been digging a little deep. Out. Well, I, know, I do know where I'll be putting my prediction if that <laughs> is the case. So let's wait and see. Shadow Demon does make it through the pool, and they take the Tidehunter. So a lot of deny nice. picks coming from OG, really going after Tundra's hero pool. They got their two or their uh, three, four, right? They they have the Tide Marana. Have no themselves. Tide, no Broodmother, no Potom for Snake King, right? Their hero pool is you know what's thirty three gonna play now? What's Snake King gonna play? 
They have uh, the hero that we cover. haven't mentioned all day. Viper. 33 plays mean off lane Viper. We saw yeah. it banned out against Tundra a lot in their games. It can be a bit weak to a one position Naga Siren. Naga Siren will do quite well in lane, I think, against a Viper. He can just mirror image off the poison attack stacks and mm -hmm. the you know the Naga plus the illusions is kind of hard for Viper to see us, although he could just drop the pool. Yeah, so I was thinking, is there any reason not to pick ABBA? The, the main reason is that now Snake King's on the Knicks, right? Yeah. Um, which kind of limits what we talked about in terms of what he likes to do in the early game. Can still make some of those deeper plays, but you know, just because you're tanky and annoying with stuns and carapace, but not nearly to the same level that he gets on the bottom, also doesn't provide as much assistance in the lane. But the yeah, ABBA's super good versus the Mirana because of the uh, ability to just like dispel either yourself or your allies. And then when the Ravage pops out, you just dispel yourself, get your carry going in the team fights. So. Definitely a good pick here. Yeah. So Razor Fallout from OG. I was going to say with this Abaddon and Nick support duo, I think Tundra's sidelines are very weak. I also mm -hmm. don't think like Abaddon does anything against... I mean, it's okay against Tide in the game because you could dispel the Ravage from yourself with your Borrowed Time ultimate and then shield someone else. But in the lane, I would say Tidehunter really does enjoy playing versus melee position fives. So I expect him to have a great time. Razor as well will also have a, probably a pretty good time. Um, if he's on a side lane, but it looks it'd probably be Thompson playing a mid, and Tanja responds with the Lena mid, which is a pretty good answer um, to everything OG has at the moment. I like that pick a lot. Ten seconds remaining. And probably is there any draft you yeah. favor at the moment? I'm favoring OG at the moment. I think that they have just like stronger team fight and stronger lanes at the moment but we'll see what they decide to round it up with because they could still do i could still see sumail playing the uh razor on the safe lane or he could even still play naga on the safe lane because it's not really that bad of a naga core game still yeah and and they still have three threes here to see right so then they're going to see what the actual yeah. lane is before they decide where this razor is going so i mean there's yeah. three three bat still in the pool in terms of like those bigger heroes but that's a pretty risky looking tricore in some sense. No, I think uh, they need some AoE. They're very mm -hmm. single target. Um, Nyx is, you know, generally stunts one target. Lena nukes one target. Abaddon doesn't do anything. <laughs> Luna is, you know, the carry. So I think some AoE team fight, if they can fight it, could be nice. Oh, that's actually such a good ban. It would have been a little bit risky to go for the Enigma, but like with the no. heroes they have, it would have felt so nice. It's really nice to have a play against Tidehunter, especially as I see Tidehunter being very, very farmed this game based on like how I envision his lane going, like Tide Bottom, pretty strong lane. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a Doom, maybe Doom could be a good answer for 33, like something that just says like, okay, let's not be afraid of this Tidehunter. Let's just start the fight, Doom him, Disruptor ult him, Black Hole him, you know. He's gonna be frontlining for sure. He's gonna have a hood. He's gonna be super annoying can you get through him right that being said like you could also try and go around him right you do have the nyx assassin you can kind of sneak behind and find the back lines but mm -hmm. i think that makes the game much uh it, it's much harder to play that way hey he's also the only one that can really go around at the moment so then he is kind of left to his own devices if he does manage depending on what the last pick is of course yeah on uh, the set of tundra og is lacking catch I would say, and I do think that because of like this Naga Tidehunter combo, I think Tundra will most likely opt to be more split push focused and sort of dodge, uh, which is kind of what they did yesterday with the Tear Blade, which worked out quite well. So I would love to see OG pick up some catch if they can. Yeah. Maybe just do Racer Safe Lane, right? Pick some catch that on mid. Is Invoker yeah. in the pool? I think Invoker yes. could be really nice for Top Sun. The Quaswex Invoker is a good matchup versus Lina throughout the entire game. Abaddon can be good against it because he can dispel the Cold Snap and the Spirit Vessel and all that kind of stuff. But just thinking of you know some active mid laner that can make some stuff happen. And there's still the Puck as well in the pool too. Sure. There's a sure. lot of really nice... I mean, all the active mids are still left in for... for is, they look like it's such a good spot. Yeah, Puck's not... Uh, he doesn't necessarily love laning against Lina too much, and there is a Nyx in the game, mm -hmm. but it still could be. I mean, Puck is such a powerful hero, and on last pick, if there's not enough catch, like, it can always be good. And the yeah. hero... One of the reasons why Puck is so good is because he has that new Witchblade, which he can just scale and actually become, like, a physical damage carry later in the game. 
something coming out for Tundra. And if we are looking for a mid hero for OG that likes to to play fast and, and initiate and all that, Earth Spirit still in the pool. <laughs> uh, didn't work out first time around, but in the first game of a best of five, would not be surprised to see OG pull it out. Uh, that being like said, the just pick something meta. Like they have everything's left. Just <laughs> like they're, they're all that there. Don't don't Earth Spirit. Just pick something that's broken. <laughs> it's very enjoyable to watch, but like every single mid hero is left in the pool right now. So uh, Tundra ban out the Drow and the anti mage, so they're still expecting a hero for Samael to be picked up here in the last uh, last slot. Yeah, so yeah, they they could still do the Razor safe lane, right? Razor Naga safe lane could be pretty mm -hmm. good. It is a double melee that's like Sand King Nyx in the off lane, so it's a pretty free lane for whatever they decide to pick. So I'm thinking, you know, what carry would be the bet? Like they could pick any carry they want. What would it be, right? Is it is it Juggernaut? Is it Nakes, is it? It's disruptor, <laughs> so it is. Wow, it's, right. it's Trent, I got what we started with the, the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. It's Carry the No Naga. Tail Disruptor. You it's just go Carry the Naga. List. What do you? Well, yep. He hasn't played in a while. All time favorites. There's the disruptor. Of course, tenth pick it. is just what you, you want for it. a disruptor. Yeah, I'm guaranteed. Pretty, I have to go for it now. Pretty it's confident. Been, and yeah. cocky move to last pick your position five. I think OG's definitely feeling themselves at the mm -hmm. moment after that victory from Nigma. Mm -hmm. I do think that it is like Nick Sanking is one of the worst off lanes, I would imagine. So I think Sumail will have a pretty all right game, even though he's playing Naga into Sanking. Naga disruptor is... combo. Dude, look at yeah. these combos at a song. I, th I think the Sanking <laughs> pick is just really underwhelming. So I, I got to favor OG with this game one. Yeah, to me it just it just looks easier. I mean, I love it's... how they stole all of Tundra's heroes. Yeah. Just, <laughs> it was so smart because I think that Tundra is just a little bit lost, um, trying to find a pairing for Snaking to play on the Snakes, which is kind of like the big difference. Usually it's Snaking or it's it's Fada playing the Nyx on the safe lane with the Skitter, yeah. Luna, or Terrorblade. Yeah, I think yeah. his game is going to be the most interesting to watch. Like, how does Snaking adapt to this style of Dota versus what he's been playing for the past five games straight and winning? Right. Yep. Yeah, we're going to find out. It is game one of a best of five, so even if it doesn't work out, you know, plenty of time to adjust and come back stronger. But uh, both my analysts think that OG has got game one in the bag. Let's see if Tundra can once again prove my analysts wrong. Let's head over to our commentary <laughs> duo of Lyrical and AUI. Thank you so much, Shiva, on the panel. Yes, indeed, that is what we always want to do, prove our uh, panelists wrong. Uh, Aoi, you, you looking at these drafts? We talked about it right before the start, uh, these combos that you can get with the Naga Siren, and you had mentioned like one of the only things that you can BKB is, is Disruptor uh, Aghanim, so you can't BKB, rather. So they've got the combos this game for sure on OG. Yeah, I think it's actually the only thing you can't BKB now. It could be wrong on that. But even if you get Black Hole or like a perfectly timed Ravage, or a pot of mail, you can get BKB off. How Dota works is like nothing, like stuff happens on the same frame, but there's always a order. Nothing really happens at the same time, and BKB gets priority. However, Disruptor eggs, it hits you during the sleep. So mm. if it's already on, you can't get priority against it. I think, okay, so Seb has gone for the no item build into, oh I'm God. assuming, a fast. Ring of I Health? Mean, I would like to see the Helma Dominator that Ice 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 pulled out the Singapore Major and 3 3 use in this tournament to great effect. But we'll see if he goes for Ring of Health for a faster hood, because there is a lot of magical damage coming out from Tundra or the Helm of Iron Well. I'm pretty sure this was an Arkosh strat, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, what's uh, Arkosh strat? The zero no, item offlaner? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except it's not a Pudge this time. Yeah, it, it looks a lot better on heroes that aren't Pudge, because okay. other heroes are less pathetic and weak. Okay. But yeah, the, the idea is really good, right? Because regen is expensive to buy. So... If you can get away with skipping it, like it's a greedy idea. He thinks like he can get carried in lane. Right? Are they putting the no? no Disruptor just coming for the runes. It's some bottom tide hunter. Peter was mentioning on the panel, but you just arrow the range creep and so nullify any aggression for your opponent. Well, it'll be good to see that one. And obviously, you can just ferry out regen. Uh, you know, Soxa, if he wants to, he can just uh, give him either tangos or a healing salve. Since there is no more uh, cooldown on tangos anymore, you can just constantly do that, uh, at least until he gets that ring of health. And we'll see if they can try and punish this. And I like this. They're starting trialing on OG here. They might get a kill here. Plata's done a pre-shield and he's trying to zone, but they don't know about the third hero here. 
Okay. Yeah, looking for an opening possibly oh. as we do get a pause to start. Oh, I mean, he still has another shield. Even if this arrow hurts, it hits, it's going to be really hard yeah, to go for and a kill. He can take off the disruptor kill for it. And, you know, it was OG who paused, which I think it's an advantageous pause from Tundra because they see that Sox are coming in from the side there. Right. The uh, matchup I'm a bit curious about is actually the mid lane one because traditionally Lina is supposed to counter Razor. But I think we saw nothing since one second as top lane. They're, they're still going to be battling here. Okay, going for it. The chase forward. Maybe they're just gonna stick with this. I mean, right. throw out the uh, the arrow, giving Seb a good start. Certainly not a bad idea. And it does look like he's doing what you're talking about, rushing that helm of iron will uh, on this this tide hunter. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. I think you can kick a Luna out of lane if you go for this belt. Anyways, back to the middle lane. I think we saw. I think it was nothing to say versus either Abid or Carl. But okay. he, he played this matchup as Razor, and he actually went even or slightly ahead than Lina because he just maxed the plasma field and played to do that. Normally, Lina's like sort of supposed to counter Razor. I mean, they picked it. Yeah, they picked it after the Razor this game, so they had the same idea. Well, it uh, certainly has sort of been a, a redefining of how these mids work is down bottom three threes, uh, taking a good chunk of damage here just from the spam coming from No Tail. Uh, but it, it definitely feels like people are coming up with new ideas of how to counter out these heroes as Fata going to connect the creep waves. Ooh, that's so that very is, nifty. Uh, that was really good. He, he ran in front of the tier one to grab the wave as soon as he had to read that Soxa was going to do that. As a result, like normally on Radiant, you have this big lane pull advantage where you can like deny a wave from your opponent etc but here he sort of nullified that they're not even going to manage to connect the wave to the next creep wave so this lane's just going to be straight in front of tundra's tower very nicely played by the fata abba and simultaneously trying to get some stacks off at the same time uh we haven't really taken a look at bottom all that much yet but this two sort of brawly melee heroes in uh, the, the Nyx Assassin and Sand King. Uh, talking about sort of weak laners to some extent, but if they do find people out like this, might be a chance for first blood. No tail? Oh, doesn't have Burrow Strike yet on 3-3. Three, three. All right, that'll stop the, the aggression. He does have two selves on no tail. He loves to buy those selves for his carry. And, but I think they're pretty happy with this on Tundra at bottom. They're going to get to pull to the neutral creeps, just sandstorm everything here, and get a lot of farm on 3-3. Three, three. I'll be something to watch for indeed as No Tail coming to try and contest this, maybe soak up a little bit of XP, but Snake King does manage to find him uh, and we'll shove him back for the moment. As up top, Seb keeps this pressure on. Talked about how strong this ability is actually going to connect with the arrow. Fada pops the stick, going to go for a chase down. Does have a point right now in the curse, but Skitter doesn't want to chase. He needs to just hit these creeps under tower. And it Thompson, is. whoa. Ooh. Oh, they're in deep there. Yeah. And that second solve from Notel coming in clutch. If he didn't have that solve, I think mid lane would pretty much be over. You know, you're forced to walk back to base this early. Well, a nice Top lane, start. It, it is 4 CS to 18, by the way. Tidehunter is not having a good time. I mean, Sox is doing bottom things where you're always happy, but Tidehunter is suffering. Yeah, that is not what you would want to see. Uh, and he is just running around now, arrowing uh, large creeps. This is the, the classic that I feel like we've seen a few times now with the Marana. Um, and sort of the, the lanes breaking down a little bit already. No Tail putting a lot of effort uh, towards mid, trying to make sure that Topson has a good time against nine. Uh, they've been able to go relatively even here, at least for the moment. 14 and six versus 13 and four. And... That does set up for Skitter to have a really nice start. He's one of the top CSs in the game right now. Yeah, both sidelines, I think. I think Tundra are very comfortable with, with what is happening. They do get a Centaur Stomp onto 3-3, uh, three, three, so he takes a little bit of additional damage. But he's just pulling waves into neutrals and sort of hyper-accelerating here. And Sanking, he's not... A particularly strong hero, but it's four minutes in. 3-3, three, three, he's going to go sell his branch for a Vanguard at four minutes. And that means, like, you can kick Nagasaren out of lane with this. I play a lot of Nagasaren, just it's one of my favorite heroes. And Sanking, ha if he has a good start, Sanking's one of the hardest Ooh. heroes to deal with. Snaking, taking a lot of damage down bottom. The right click's coming through. Good Burrow Strike. That keeps him alive. And 3-3... Three, three will be able to take back over this lane. As you mentioned, it's just, it's so hard to do anything against the Sand King now. 
And normally you think Nyx Sanking are just pathetic laners. But honestly, right. it's the same for Naga Siren. She's just okay. not that powerful in lane. Just, I mean, she's, it's not like she's bad, but how Naga Siren lanes is you focus on your own farm, you sort of shove the wave in with like Illusion to Reptide, and you don't care so much about how your opponent is doing. Hmm. Well, certainly given a, a better start to the Sand King than we're seeing for Seb here. Although, again, as you mentioned, it's it's we got to keep this in context of the Marana uh, moving around, getting farm for herself. Uh, is going to place a pretty aggressive ward there back behind the mid-tier one tower as well. And they have another one up on this cliff, uh, which we'll see if Snake King has an idea that it's up there. Yeah, so he's going to be able to go for this D ward. Uh, Soxa is <laughs> getting a little bit up in his face as well. Uh, very awkward situation there. Gonna try and go for the deny. Oh, throws out the stun. Well played. Good stun by Snaking. So no kills yet. A very different game from what we saw in the lower bracket finals. Oh, and a very pivotal rune steal from Snaking as well. Oh, he's going on to deny. This is the LSA. Try to go for him. Is it gonna be enough? The big arrow snaking looks for the stun, not quite in rage, and nine. Able to live through it, but does get the Aphotic Shield afterwards. Upson still able to get that finish with one last punch, and Fada dropped down low. Snaking wants to kill Topson. This dude's alive on 26 HP. Oh, he might he die. should he know that there's draw. a ward there. Ooh, wait, they've got Mist Coil, but don't want to turn to try and burn. Topson gets out of there. Oh, and that's a huge play. Anytime you have these lanes, uh, you know, you counterpick the lane with Lina versus Razor. Oh, and Soxa, he finds Fada as well. Anytime oh you have God. these lanes where you're sort of supposed to counter pick your opponent and win the lane, and it swings the other way for whatever reason, it's a huge deal in terms of the draft. It's just any anytime, you know, as a drafter, like anytime you think something's going to happen and your mm -hmm. game thing sort of falls apart, sometimes you've, like, you've over compensated for it in other parts of your draft. You're like, okay, mid's winning, so we can be a little bit weaker on our supports this game, you know? Abaddon Nyx, they don't make as many moves. But Tossin makes these big plays against solo kills. Like, what are the moves coming in from Tundra now? You have to wait for 3-3 to get really farmed. And he is very farmed. As you saw from that stat, it's he one is. of the fastest vanguards that we've seen, but it is still going to be a while. And in that time period, it feels like OG can potentially make some stuff happen, whether it's around, you know, this Helm of the Dominator coming out from Seb, or whether it's, you know, just Topson running in there and trying to make some plays happen, uh, as we saw from that moment. And so many little individual counterplays, right? Like the ABBA being able to purge off the the, the Q from Disruptor and then, uh, you know, getting a little bit over aggressive afterwards and gaining that last right click before the damage steal wore out. But we'll see how this one goes as the runes are getting picked up and down bottom, they do go in for the kill. So 3-3, able to make something happen there on the Sand King, uh, this level just... seven. He, that was a solo kill. He just stunned an epicenter to him. And it's a big deal to sort of kill the enemy support who's trying to camp the tower. Because that, when the support stands at the tower, they're effectively getting like a full lane of EXP and gold, right? So that kill is it's basically worth as much as a normal core kill. You can see like the tower pressure coming in. And it's not like Noto really wants to TP back bottom. I mean, he might. He's waiting for his TP and base. But it might not feel good because they'll just dive him again this moment. Oh, he looks like he's going to go top. So they're wanting to try and get a return kill uh, since they have a feeling that this tower is going to start going down uh, as Fada keeps that pressure on. They have the Helm of the Dominator creep, which can tank through a lot of those tower shots too. And do Tundra want to come and contest this? And Soxa, he's been so good at warding up Luna's jungle. This results in Thompson being able to come in here. Looking for something. They pull back Skitter. Disruptor, pretty good here for that. TP's away immediately. Oh, but the stun! The chain, it's there. They get the Skitter kill, and Fada, he's gonna go down too. So, a couple quick ones from OG as the tips come out, but Topson's starting to feel himself here in this Grand Finals. And immediately, Saxa, after setting up that big play for the top, he rotates bottom, he rewards himself. He gets to take all this farm and push the lane. They noted that 3-3 TP top, you know, Abaddon and Skitter both use their TPs in that play, so they're not gonna be able to do anything aggressive. Now Thompson's stealing the jungle, Saxa's catching up, and Tidehunter, even if like he's pushing that top lane, he had already done the 3-3, you know, where you send your centaur or troll and join them in the gank. It's a very strong concept. Tundra did get some compensation during that play. Lina was able to shove mid, sort of catch up. We can see her rise a bit through the net worth. And 3-3, he defended top, and he's he's looking like a solid wall here. But it's overall, really hard. very good for OG. Yeah, it's so hard to come and try and push this Sand King out. But like you said, just being able to come in and invade like this that we're seeing from Seb, it, it kind of 
doesn't feel like it matters that much because you're shutting down this Luna's farm. You know, she Skitter doesn't feel comfortable here at all. 3-3 uh, three, three is coming to try and connect the creep wave uh, over to the side with Sumail and No-Tail all around him. Epicenter afterwards, they just dropped the ulti. They had vision down on him. Down, Ravage afterwards. Is 3-3 three, three gonna go down here? Yes, they find the kill. That is huge. Oh jeez, they take down the impenetrable wall. That's the biggest kill on the map. And honestly, a little bit greedy from 3-3. Three, three. He saw all the heroes top, but he just wanted to eco a little bit more efficiency. That kill does not happen under the tower. And honestly, it might not happen again if not for the center creep coming out from Seb's HOTD. I mean, it probably would have. They still had a glimpse. But right. again, like, the value of this item on offlaners, this item fell out of favor a lot, I think, during this last patch. But it still gives you a lot of things. Like, there was a meta where offlaners always went for Helmet Dominator. Oh, is he going to get a glimpse back to base? He gets yeah. the Burl Strike at. Oh, He misses tries. the Burl Strike. Okay. Yeah. And now that's a it's a long walk. He's gonna dig himself up something. He's like, I don't even want this creep. Give me back to that lane. Uh, but the walk out there is gonna take too long. As tier one will go down, and mid. I mean, it's all it's all just being pressured right now by OG. I mean, granted, it's less than a thousand gold lead, but it feels like the the sort of pressure that's being exerted on the map is is definitely uh, suffocating a little bit. Tundra did manage to get that bottom tier one tower though. Yeah, and that, that is very big for them. They, It's not like this game's uneven. I think how I'm talking, it feels like OG are making these insane moves. The thing about, it's just like the nature of their lineup as well, because you're running right. Lina, Luna cores. Both of these heroes want to farm a lot. Meanwhile, you know, Razor's going to shove the lane in, go seal the enemy jungle. Uh, they've been very efficient on Tundra while all these plays are happening. You know, Nine, he caught up a lot despite the good play from Thompson mid, and he's top network now. They're going to tops in here. They, they need, to and this is a big kill if they can find it, and they will. Laguna Blade comes out, and the right clicks to follow. Just as we're uh, talking about how, yeah, it's not quite as clean cut as it looks. Uh, Tundra do make that play to pull it back a bit more into their favor, and now they are uh, wanting to pressure mid, but Seb will come in and sort of put the kibosh on all that action. Uh, still down bottom, Stoxa gets a little bit of free time for himself, trying to get into those Guardian Greaves. Ooh. Uh, Skitter? Oh, arrow. Is there anything else afterwards? It really, do I mean, he's taking a lot of damage. The Naga Siren Illusion hitting him hard, but Fada's nearby. But Fada can heal him up a bit here. Fada actually had his ultimate procced by a random neutral creep hitting him. The big thing though is they rotated all the heroes down towards Skitter to protect them, and Seb, he's just whacking on mid tower. He has Helmet of Dawn Rider, Soul Ring, and Hood. No boots because he understands that if he just tanks up this game, the damage from Tundra is very hard to get him to a Tidehunter. It's all magical right now, and with Hood, Kraken Shell, and a Return Ravage, it's, it's just too scary to go on him. You mean no upgraded boots, right? He definitely has a pair of brown boots, but that's fine. Did, did he just get that, or am I <laughs> yeah. crazy? I, no, he just got that in his career. Okay, he went all those items before boots. Well, that's still pretty hype. Seb, being just a beefcake, taking over the Ancients now as well. What and OG, they, they, do? they farmed so many of Tundra's camps, like even Sumail getting involved. Or he is scouted out by a Nyx, but there was that Radiant Sentry Ward that caught a glimpse of snaking. Top okay. point? Going for it. 3-3, three, three. seeing if he can find this kill on the top. And again, down very low, but not low enough. Muted, nine, gets himself away. Seb, walking in, looking for that Ravage. Sumail, oh, dropping so quickly. Do they have enough damage? He's alive on 20 HP. Another round of them getting out on nothing. 3-3, three, three, looking for a kill. Ring around the rosy. Soxa gets up to the high ground. They anticipate he's there, but he jumped down to the low. Tundra getting outmaneuvered a little bit as they lose the Luna and only get the Disruptor. Man. OG has to be the team with the most heroes surviving under 50 HP in the world. It's just constantly happening. Happening. Thompson survives, he comes back in to turn it around, he survived on like one hit. And then again, Sumel, one hit again. Like, one more right click from Tundra and this game is swinging completely in the other direction. Again, it's an even game, but Tundra, that was like a big chance for them. Maybe even some beam RNG, you know? Maybe if uh, Skitter had a third point right. in beam instead of aura or something, it's, it's, it's wild. Well, that's the difference maker sometimes. That's all it can take. And yeah, I, I, I will say it's very impressive the way that Tundra has been able to like maintain this farm level, uh, you know, into this like very aggressive uh, pressuring type of lineup. And 3-3 here will get caught by the arrow down bottom. 
will be able to burrow strike out afterwards though so a bunch of heroes rotating in and uh, again seb the only one that's left up here on the top side of the map but he still just feels so free to do this yeah and it, it's so hard to punish seb for just walking wherever he wants uh both offliners going for sort of more old school i'd say like a lot of items before blink dagger i think recently the meta has been a lot of blink daggers initiation on the offliner role but 3-3, three, three, he bought Vanguard and Travels before, you know, Seb bought HODD and Hood. And it's more of a greedy style, so I think both these teams are gearing up towards the mid late game. That's fair. That's what we would want to see from these types of uh, players as well. No early GG's in this one. Again, a spot on the line for TI, the only one from Western Europe through these qualifiers. And By down bottom, they're going to go oh. again. Looking. Oh, Invis and out of there. He's fine. Look at no Notos, tent. he's just walking into the enemy triangle, blocking the Ancients. <laughs> Again, they, they already Wait, had one. I'm not sure if that other one blocked or not. Uh, they might have misplaced that one. But he also, he doesn't D-Ward this because he doesn't want them to realize that he was in there. So that he spotted this Observer Ward with the Sentry that he placed down, but just leaves it. Okay. That's kind of weird. But that's sort of a weird play. I, I mean, Notel has a very wrinkly big brain, so <laughs> I don't want to question him too much. <laughs> but it's not what you would right, normally expect. But, it. you know, these teams are standing in default. Nothing has really happened, but OG, they're slowly building their lead. It's gone to 3k, and 9's getting gone on here. Looking for an opening. Can they find it? TP's out, but the arrow's there. They were ready. It's interesting. It, like, Disruptor being out of the meta for so long, like, the way that this hero can change the way that you have to play, it's really hard to deal with. I think. And 3-3 three, three is just going to try and get himself away also. Does manage to waddle out of there. And it didn't really matter there because they had a glimpse coming anyways, but I just thought it was cute how there's a creep blocking the arrow. So Soxa and Thompson had some communication where Thompson killed the creep before the arrow was fired. Just to yeah. guarantee that kill. Uh, I mean, no tail was there with the infinite range glimpse anyways. But always nice to see that cooperation in Dota. True enough. And Sumel, well, he's actually gone for an SMY, by the way. Not your usual Manta. What that Ooh. means is you, you really want to hit this huge shine. Are they going for Seb Tall? This is a big kill. Blink Dagger reveal. Jumps right on top. Oh, but they're cliffing the wave as well. Seb, Ravage on to five. Can that get him out of here, though? Snaking, moving forward. Doesn't have the mana right now for the stun. He's looking for that next round coming. coming in. Can they get out of here, though? The Song of the Siren comes out. They all spread. Ravage is already down. The only target that they can spot right now is Skitter. Do they go on to him? They have the arena afterwards. Spada pops that and enough. Yes, he's living. Skitter able to go for the turnaround. The Aphotic Shield doing work, but Thompson turns now. Nine trying to make something else happen there, but the rest of Tundra still alive. Seb again getting out with 100 HP. Nine dropping down low, but able to live through it. Sumail now turns on to Nine, tries to blow him up, able to find it snaking, also gonna fall. The only one left alive is going to be 3-3 three, three as Sumail gets the triple kill. Very impressive showing. Blink out. Does he get away? They spot him over there. Do you have the Ooh, net afterwards? No oh my goodness. Catching him off to the side and the delayed five hero wipe is going to come out from 3-3 three, three as Topson gets that final touch. What a fight. Good. And again, Good. Seb, he's just living on 100 HP. His his items just perfectly oriented towards the game. They're sort of outplaying Tundra in these fights. I, I think it's like right now, it, it was definitely OG's timing. Like if you have Naga Siren and you have Ravage, Static Link, Arrow, and Disruptor, all, like this entire lineup is tailored around the Naga Siren, which makes sense. It was the first two Naga Siren. It's very hard to fight into them until your course of BKB. And both, I feel like they've gone a little bit greedy on Tundra's side. Like, Lina went for the Boots of Travels and Yule Scepter. I think at the Major, we saw a lot of Yule's BKB, and we saw from Miracle even going Boots of Travels straight into that BKB. I would have preferred that a bit this game. Right, it is making him a little bit more vulnerable to these combos. And I mean, in that instance, right? Like the Static Storm, you still got the, the Photic Shield off to try and save it. Glimpse a little bit misplayed there with Nine, who does manage to get out. This is, is a this big timing, timing for Tundra. There, there's no there's no Static Storm, so that means that the Sleep is much less threatening. I don't think they'll get to do anything with it. They pretty much still need to farm their BKBs. Skitter right. is going to disassemble his Dragonlance just to get out that BKB just a bit quicker because he understands like the necessity of this item this game. But overall, like look at the net worth. 
Oh, yeah. they're just pulling ahead. To be honest, going into this game, I thought if Tundra win this game with this draft, I think it's going to be 3-0. Because I, I, I thought it was so hard for them to fight. I mean, they can still win this game because Luna, you know, there's a reason why <laughs> she's one of the best two carries in this meta right now, in this tournament at least. But it, it's looking a little tough for them here. It's playing a little bit on hard mode, and OG definitely taking advantage of it and making all the right moves constantly. Uh... We've seen this sort of, like you talk about, a little bit more brawly build coming out from Sumail uh, that's allowed him to get involved in these fights maybe earlier than you would anticipate from a Naga Siren. Bottom 3-3 three, three might get... Nope, never mind. Sai? They're smoking up on Tundra, though. They they want something to happen on this map. They need to make some moves before the Beekeeper and Lina is too Look far no away. Tail. No Tail right behind. Ready to try and interrupt this. Nine, he doesn't have his BKB yet, but there's the catch on a No Tail instead. So they're going to try and find that finish onto him first. Seb still being brought down low. So kind of going on two separate targets, and they end up not getting either of them. Very weird moment right there. Arrow going to be off the mark. They're bringing in Sumail now. He has Song still. This looks really bad for Tundra, as they're going to catch Snake King, try and bring him down. Do they have enough? Yes. Snake King will fall. Hobson did use the BKB right there, trying to TP out right now with Lita, but won't get out in time. Soxa cleans up Fada. And Tundra, just target prioritization, not quite there. I think maybe a little bit of nerves, maybe a breakdown in communication, but I think, I mean, OG, they're playing really well. These heroes getting on 100 HP. But I think if you go back, like with hindsight, and you watch the replays, you know, 0.25 speed, these heroes probably could have died with a little bit more coordination from Tundra. And that's also revealing itself in that bot fight. I think you can't go on this Tide Hunter. They've episode him twice. He hasn't even come close to dying. For the initial epicenter. The disruptor, he's just he's a juicy five position there. Lena could have just walked sort of walked over and right clicked him a couple of times. But again, like this is this is hard. Like it's hard to play in these situations. You're in the finals of the TI qualifiers. You really want to go to TI. And right. I mean this is sort of where OG shine, right? There's a reason they're two time TI champs. They definitely have that communication down and whether it's uh Whatever it ends up being, it's it's going to need to be a, a big change up from Tundra if they want to get back into this game. Because 11,000 net worth lead at 22 minutes. Uh, this is OG just doing OG thing. And they've already queued up and have done the Aghanim Scepter on Seb. So now you've got Minus Armor working together with all the rest of this physical damage coming out from Naga, coming out from Razor. Uh, if they want to go into the Roche Pit, it feels like at almost any point with Song up, they can do that. The game is completely free. And Tundra, they're going to try and reclaim a little bit of map composure as they head down bottom. And Sumail, he almost has his heart finish. I don't think Tundra have the heroes to deal with the Naga Siren pressure on the map. So a lot of this game, it's going to come down to OG getting to make all the choices. Because, you know, you have more map pressure, which gives you more information and more vision. And your opponent, on the flip side, they get none of that. You see, he's killed plays from Fada. He's pulling the mid wave, trying to do anything to get his team back into this game. But they're just in such a commanding position. And look at bottom. Oh, looking for it. Skitter, you can't get caught here, my man. They pull him back in, have BKB TP out. And that'll be enough to get Skitter away. Now, do they lose any other heroes on the retreat? Doesn't look like it. And just back to farming again. But look at who's been here already. Nagar Siren has farmed out the entire jungle, pretty much. And... OG, something they're doing so well that's understated this game is they're doing a lot of econo economical damage to Tundra. I saw Seb throw his random HODD creep to block the Ancients. They, they've had like three sentries on this Ancient camp, just shoving them in there. And your Skinner, he, he's not the normal Luna. He's 11k net worth at 24 minutes. In a free farm Luna game, I think you want like 14k at 20 minutes. He's not there and he's not going to be there until like 20, I don't know, 28 minutes? Like, he's way that's far behind. Math. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just said a lot of random numbers I've made up. They're not even real, so... Yeah, they mean things to you, I'm sure of it. But, uh, yeah, it's 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 wild, I think. The, like, the job that we've seen OG do, it's just to study in how to shut down this Naga Siren that's been so difficult to deal with uh, across the qualifiers. All regions. And now Naga Siren, she's just heading into Roshan. She's itemizing to be super tanky because she understands that her map presence is insane this game. She's gonna get Heart, she's gonna get Scotty, and... Like, how do you really... It's not even about fighting. Because if, if there's a 5 on 5 fight where you get a good epicenter, some good Nyx stuns, you have a lot enough to save on Tundra to sort of 
take any good fight. It's about the fact that OG, they get to choose when they want to fight. You can see, like, Seb, he's not under any pressure. He went for the Agonis before Blink Digger, opting to scale as hard as he can. He can just have Naga sleep for him so he can get Ravage off. He doesn't care. Absolutely. And this is now another moment where uh, Tundra are still getting stuff around the map while this Roche is being taken. They know that this is going on, and they have to wait for that next set of timings to try and take the fight. But we'll see what OG decide to do with this Aegis. Feels like it might be a little bit of constriction time by them as Naga will take back over this jungle. There is a decent ward in this area by Tundra, uh, which is just outside of the uh, outpost. We'll see if they can maybe catch somebody on that, but it's it's just really difficult with their lineup to find any kills at this point. And they are, they do have the fresh BKB on nine. Oh, a little bit of a mix up there. Don't worry, we're back. Uh, as it does look like the attempt tops in. He's right on top of Fada. They spot him. Baits out that LSA. Not going to get anything from it. And pops the ulti afterwards. That is a lot of damage stolen by Thompson as Fada just gets ripped apart. Laguna Blade afterwards trying to find this finish. Thompson goes down. Oh, Aegis used. And suddenly things start to look better. Skitter, he is in. BKB and now the epicenter. Tundra trying to turn this back around. The Ravage doesn't do anything. They get the Burrow Strike for the kill. What a freaking play from Tundra. Now the turn, 3-3. Three, three, getting brought down low by these Naga Siren Illusions. And on the other side, Thompson, he pops his BKB, but gets turned on. That, the, the, the aura from, from Skitter with all those heroes punching him was tremendous there. And Tundra, Damn. I mean... Maybe I shouldn't have counted out in this game at all because they've come back against both Liquid and Bream, I think, from insane leads. And they're showing why right there. They're ready to punish their opponent. You know, a little bit of sloppiness, I'd say, from OG in that play. But that was Aegis and Razor's refresher timing. And they use Ravage, Song, Dest like they use everything. And it's a three, it's a effectively a 4 2 4 1 for the Aegis. All of a sudden, Luna, she's back into this game. She's going to go... She has her pike now, so she can't get linked as easily. She's going to go for the Daedalus shard build, so she doesn't have to commit. And this is something I completely didn't calculate, is a Luna shard. This helps you deal with the illusions a lot. Combined with the Daedalus, one or two beams, and you can clear two illusions basically for free. Well, OG definitely still in the lead right now. Uh, as you can see, 16 to 9, but more importantly, that 9,000 gold lead but a setback, and we've seen leads get thrown away before uh, by a lot of different teams in this qualifier. They're gonna need to definitely shore it up a little bit here if they wanna close out this game number one. They have a great ward in the area that's gonna scout out Fada, but right now, Soxa getting hunted by Snaking. Does he stick around a bit too long? Sumail's over here, and that might be enough to separate this, so does look like they'll be able to find that pickoff onto Snaking. Good movement by OG to keep this pressure on. And now, more. Skitter oh. getting chased. Doesn't have Ravage, and Skitter does have BKB. But they're going to slow him down a little bit. Sumail moving into position, does have that song available. Pops the BKB, trying to run away. And that was a really good play right there. They do manage to kill off Sumail's Courier, uh, but forcing out that BKB and now getting that Tier 2 tower. Really good stuff from OG. And Sumail, he, he's chosen because of the mess-ups. You can't go for pure tankiness unless you're really far ahead of your opponent. You do have to kill him at some point. Because of the last fight, I think he's opted to go for the Butterfly. I think it's the right choice. He's also picked up the best item for Nagasaren, in my opinion. Oh. Um, spider Legs. I thought I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> say Quickly Charm, but apparently now it's Spider Legs. The item is just too good. 3-3, oh. he's making space, but honestly... Okay. Yeah. It's gonna be KB out. These BKB timings, you were right, they're so strong in this yeah, type they, of a game. When you're behind, the only way you can come back against Naga's Iron lineups is to figure out a way to fight them. Because you can't split push, your map is always going to be bad. But what Naga Siren's weakness is, is she is a terrible, terrible hero who doesn't really offer any <laughs> teamfight of her own. Like, I play a lot of Naga Siren, she's a timing hero, you need map control. I think a lot of the people that think about Naga Siren would sort of say the same. You think of like your TZs or Almas, they always go. Oh, for like this big oh. timing aggression. Oh, they call him. They catch him. The impale afterwards. Low on mana has enough for the song, but the BKBs. BKBs? What? Where are the BKBs? Oh, they're not going to catch him there. Oh, nine. He came in in time. Pops that BKB. The Laguna Blade out. They find the finish. Sumail goes down. Ooh, that was. 
that was really clutch by nine because I think Skidder was he was gonna really kick himself there. He had Pike up and he had BKB up, but he didn't use either of them because he's trying to be a bit greedy for the fight. Maybe he's yeah. used to like moving with his windlace that he had for most of the game. Honestly, it was like 0.1 seconds off getting the beam off, and then he wouldn't have needed to waste his BKB anyways. But oh, mm -hmm. OG, they want to fight without Naga. He has his BKB now though, but he's gonna get caught. Is he gonna get killed? Yes. That is a big blow up. I, I, I guess that like, you know that, oh wait, Fada? He's in trouble too, one by one, OG, finding these picks as Fada is going to give him a high five, but uh, will be brought down very quickly afterwards. And what great recognition right now by OG to find that opening. And now looking for more. No tail, if they get vision down, oh, three threes in trouble. He has his BKB for the TP out though, if they want to use it. Yule Scepter, but the BKB TP, and he's away. They are. I, I, I thought that maybe they were going to stick around this top side a little bit longer and maybe push that tower, but wanting to go for the extra kills instead. OG, always the bloodthirsty squad. Yeah, I think they're just constantly forcing out these BKBs. And I mean, I saw nine during that engagement. After, while they're going for Ablon, Seb was like sitting in front of his mid wave and he hit him for like a good five seconds on Lena. Seb did not care. The other thing I want to mention is that this Aghanim Scepter plus the Gush Talent at 20 and 15 has really good synergy with um, OG's lineup because Naga Siren, Riptide, is actually 8 armor at like max and you can get the shard for another 4 armor. So if they ever win at like any engagement, they're always going to be able to take Roshan instantly. They're going to do a lot of physical damage if they can right click them, which they can because they have so many combo spells off to sleep. I wonder if Sumail ends up getting the shard eventually, too. It's another I, four armor. It's one of the best shards. You definitely want to buy it at some point. Um, but, I mean, Naga's Island farms so fast that you can sort of delay it a lot just because, you know, you get the other items first. Well, Nine hoping to punch a little bit harder. Finishes Us. off the MKB now. Smoke up from OG here. Looking is down he Skitter? bottom. Oh, Skitter. He is not oh, in a good spot. Skitter. And Fada's not nearby enough. Looking for that chase down Hurricane Pike. Back out. The rest of Tundra, though, moving into position. BKB comes out. He's gonna immediately link up to nine, trying to right click him down for death. Is it going to be enough to get him down? Yes, they find that kill. Now Sumail turns, trying to find that kill now onto Skitter. What does he have left in the tank? Over to the side. No tail is there as well. Snaking down to the ground. The Ravage, though, for the turnaround, and they blow up Skitter. What a great combo from Sev9. Trying to turn now onto No Tail. He finds that kill. He might just be able to clean up in the back line. Oh, they didn't account for nine as the right clicks come in. Triple kill for him. Burrow Strike tries to back away from Seb. Snake King gonna just sit there in the crowd, a little pile of dirt causing trouble. But what a turnaround from nine. Oh my God. This Lena, she's kicked in, you know? She was tickling that Tidehunter earlier, but as soon as she gets to this MKB, this hero does insane damage. She has a level 20 talent, which means that Fiery Soak is 130 attack speed per stack of which you get three. It's 390 attack speed in one skill. That's an insane thing. And with MKB, she just killed everyone. Sumail, he has 4k HP with a butterfly. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that is uh, some scary stuff. And we saw there even even the, the Razor dying while he got the link off on Delina. Uh, if you're able to burst him down before that ends up coming out fully, it's going to matter. Well, top lane, they got no top, tail as well here. They find him. This combination they're looking at quite strong from Tundra, and they're chaining these kills together. Roche a minute and a half away. So that it, will give them enough time on OG to catch back up. Aeon disc on nine as well. So this is one of the counters to the Naga sleep Aghanim's combo disruptor. Seb, he's still a boss. He's just going to walk in here alone. Snakey keeps on trying to hit those spike carapaces. That one's going to be off the mark, and afterwards, they're going to connect with the arrow. Just getting a uh, little bit too close for comfort. Wait, turn now on to Soxa. Fuel Scepter lift up afterwards. Seb gets the anchor smash off. LSA going to connect right clicks. It's enough. Fada gets the ulti proc'd. Aeon Disc is down as well. Nine going to have to back out of here, but they're kind of committing for this tier one tower. You can see all heroes right now on this side of the map. They will take that down, and that gives them a pretty good avenue to go and fight for Roche if they can take mid-tier one as well on Tundra. And this has been a big comeback from Tundra. They even get this illusion with the bottom. Normally, you can't get the lanes out versus Nagasai with their lineup. But if you constantly kill your opponents, 
you can because you know they just have less heroes to push the lane out. You get this illusion rune. It's basically like a Midas on steroids because you push every wave and you get map control. And all of a sudden, it's looking a lot better for Tundra. To Big Song sweet. afterwards. This is a good combo here. The Disruptor ultis down. They have the Ravage if they need it, but just tear up those two heroes. Those ones don't have BKBs. So a really nice combination. Jump on Sumail, though. The turn. Sumail, he's starting to drop down low. Lacuna Blade, BKBs are already out. He tries to walk away, but it won't happen. And now Thompson turned upon as well. They've got the vision, looking to take him down. Will it be enough, though? The body block's coming in from Fata as he gets the ulti off the turn. The Ravage, that might be enough. Skitter starting to drop down low. The beam, they try to kill him, but Skitter gets away. This Gush. time, Seb, Gush, it's not going to be there. They can't bring him down. LSA and the chase continues. They have the Dust Socks, they're trying to back away. It looks like they're gonna get Seb out, but fight after fight going into the favor of Tundra. Oh, oh. this is getting really spicy, Lyrical. Look at this, they caught, it. They caught Saxo again. Oh man, Burrow Strike is there. He's just gonna get shredded. And the tier one tower is gonna go down now. This is this Roche is a two open. and Roshan and you know OG. They've been putting on some magic this game, living fights with one HP, constantly getting out. This time it's Tundra striking back. Skitter barely living there. You know, Fada taking up anything he can for his boy, shielding him, healing him, and. I don't know, Naga Siren, this hero is very trash. If you don't win the game, you fall <laughs> off. <laughs> like the oh. shard for Luna is huge there because he had it queued up, but now he's basically been given 1400 gold. He has the Daedalus. He's going to be able to go for the Satanic. I don't I don't know if the team fights are looking simple for OG anymore. No tell. Well, he's desperately trying to get his Aghanims, but I don't know. It's, it's spooky. Yeah, I think that, that like, what you're talking about right there is going to be the big uh, potential for the turnaround here. And, you know, why OG definitely never going to give up in this game. You've always got that chance for dropping the, you know, Static Storm down with the Aghanims. It's going to be potentially devastating. Um, and if we ever get to the point <laughs> that it's likely, uh, that level 25 talent from No Tail is absolutely insane with the AoE for it. Uh, don't know if we're going to get there, but... Uh, it takes up the whole freaking screen, it feels like. Oh, you time. mean his 25 talent disruptor? I mean, honestly, yes, exactly. the way this game is going, we might. <laughs> because look at look at the net worth graph. OG, they were dominating. They had this 10k gold plus lead for like, I don't know, right. what is that? I can't do math. Like, 15 minutes. And now, Tundra, they're back. They're up 2k. Did, have they ever been... They, were, they haven't been leading since like 2 minutes into the game or something. An impressive turnaround. And at least for the moment... Things feeling like it's Tundra's way, but we've seen OG come back from bigger deficits before. I think I think the hardest thing as Naga's trying to play against is actually Sanking's 25 talent. Because it makes it your illusions never right click anyone. It doesn't even matter if you have MKB. It's about the movement speed slow and just getting into this area, it kills them. And now like I tried to think, like, they need a really well, big combo in order to win team yeah. fights on OG, and, and they're and looking they've, for they've, it here. They've got the potential. Tidehunter, he also got Arcane Blink. Arcane Blink. <laughs> Dude, this guy's wild. What? Seb. <laughs> Thompson. They're, they're all in this area. Oh, God. A big song play is exactly what they need right now. Skitter and Snake King, they're a little ways away. You can see Tundra, though. The, the positioning, they're all spread out. They know that's one of the few ways that OG can get back into this. And they're not giving him that, that opportunity for the moment. Aren't these like sort of meme items? Like Eternal Shroud, Tidehunter, Arcane Blink? Listen, Seb's a memer, okay? Like they, they were very far ahead. <laughs> no, because their understanding of the game is going to be different than mine. But in my right. head, these items don't make as much sense. Like, I would have liked to see, I don't know, like Shiva's Refresher on Tidehunter with this much farm. Like, maybe it'll work out, but I'm very curious if, like, this was, like, a... Maybe they're a bit too cocky getting ahead in this game, but they, they're catching Ooh. Sumail again here mid. This is this is really bad for OG, but potentially good if they can turn with a big counter-initiation play. Song of the Siren comes out. That's a lot of heroes he has together. But will it be enough? No Tail drops it down, but nine. He got his BKB off. He ran into the Song. Sumail turns down on a Snake King, trying to find that kill, but he's not dying. Ravage afterwards connects on the board. They try and bring him down. Snake King will die. Skitter with the turn, hoping to live through this Topson starting to drop down low. Nine didn't fall, but eventually he does. And now Sumail standing tall through all of this, 
but that talent coming in from 3-3, the turn now from Skinner, the Luna trying to carry like it's done so many times through all of these games, but it's not looking like it's quite gonna happen. He's still so tanky. They buy back on 3-3. They have to get him back into this fight. Flipping that wave, looking for the chase down. Do they find him? Yes. They're gonna catch Sumail here. The buyback comes afterwards from the Tidehunter, and now Tundra have to run. 3-3, dodging away for the moment. Skitter thinking about turning on this one. It's so tough though. Seb is so tanky. And 3-3 will attempt to escape. The fight is already won by OG, but how much more can they get? They take down that Sand King. Back and forth, the pendulum swings. Oh my God. I was thinking, like, how could OG win these fights? And they found it. They bait Tundra into sort of a weird position, and they get this perfect Agnan Disruptor OT onto some crucial heroes. Skitter, he has the Aegis, but... You know, top in, he manages zone 9 out with Lina, and Lina, she just, I mean, she didn't have enough for buyback there, and they mm. win that fight. They they kill 3-3 three, three twice, who is the biggest mess, and we might be seeing some Raxes going down here. I mean, the Honestly, fight lasted like, so long that they've got Ravage back up again in 15 yeah. seconds, and no heroes! There's a dieback for Sand King! I think they've really identified that snaking is a big problem in these team fights, And you can see 3-3, three, three, he, he has his courier position. They're going to pull to midway, but you know, you have top and mid pushing in. I don't know if this sneaky play is going to work off the top. Where the curse? Oh, well, nonetheless, I mean, like you said, they have creeps in the base already. Snaking is back up along with Lena. Can OG manage to take these racks while Sand King is down? Can they go for more? I mean, Snake King is burrowed. Close for that stun to start. They have a lot of these cores left alive. No more Sand King for 50. There's the BKB out, Sumail turning onto him, trying to take him down low. It's a lot of damage though. Back onto Sumail and there's the Ravage afterwards. It comes out with the Static Storm down on all of them. Aeon Disc, I don't know if that's gonna be enough to keep him alive as nine. Oh wait, the BKB though, able to turn this around. They turn on to Soxa, take him down to boot. So two quick kills and nobody died on Tundra. They, I, did they re-get the gem there? I, I... I think they picked it up from Soxa as well there, and that's a huge turnaround. Again, you know, you get top racks, but you push a little bit too far, and your heroes sort of get exposed, because when these BKBs come up from Tundra, you don't have that much damage. It's very hard for Topson to run in 9. He's just... I don't know how much DPS he's doing, but this might be one of the highest DPS heroes in the game. If you can get to MKB Daedalus, I mean, you have 400 attack scene for your skill, you get all the plus damage items. He's a huge nuisance in these fights for... OG, and you can't burst him because of the Aeon Disc. And look at this, too. You've, you've got one item that Fada's been queuing up this entire game, and he's got it now coming out. It's the Aghanim Scepter. So That's sick. He, he, ha he also took the Mist Coil heal and damage talent. So now, whenever he pops this, any extra damage that's being dealt in this AoE, which is all of OG's damage, pretty much, he's going to be healing up the rest it's, of his team. It's pretty much a full nullification of damage. I mean, you're healing them like 70%. If you get a Holy Locker, I think it's something like 85 or something ridiculously high. The numbers are a bit off, but that's another counter coming out to dis disrupt our Agonims because, you know, you can even bait your team. They can get caught in it. There's no way you have enough damage to kill them during this Abaddon Eggs ultimate. It's such a smart choice by Fada. And there's no healing nullification or reduction coming out for OG squad. They don't have the Shivas, they don't have the Spirit Vessel, and they don't have a Scotty. So he will heal his teammates. Like, they, they can live through anything. That, that's my idea of the Abaddon eggs. As long as Fada's not the one that gets caught, uh, yeah. I guess, is the biggest thing. I mean, and Snaking, look at... He's, he has a BKB on Nyx Assassin. He's got Aegon's <laughs> to BKB. If you just look at the damage coming from OG's side, if you are golden, they cannot kill you. They just don't have the means to right-click you. So OG's win condition now, they have to catch Abaddon plus a core inside the Static Storm. Like, Fada has to be very careful in these next engagements. Oh, he's just running brazenly in. Uh, does not appear to care. Three, well, he, three. he can be caught alone too as well, right? As long okay. as he's not... I mean, this would be bad if he got caught here. But, you know, they're smoked up. They're fairly three, three. confident. Oh, he doesn't have the gem. He's spot told the Nugget Siren oh. Illusions now. And smoke gonna get broken. Okay, that was uh, that was a scary moment. That was a pucker for sure. Uh, but they are gonna back away. And... All right. No G, I think with uh, Fata showing there for a second, that's gonna reveal that, yes, we do have the Aghanim Scepter on the side of Tundra, and for OG, yes, we've still got the, the Ags Disruptor. So, uh, both teams very aware. I I'm wondering if we end up seeing that Ags eventually from Topson with this refresher play. 
Look at the Roshan spawn timer. 15 seconds. OG have control over this area of the map with the double ward. Sorry, what was that you asked about the uh, egg well, refresh or something? <laughs> for uh, for Razor, I, I'm wondering eventually. I mean, we'll, we'll see yeah. if they just get one on, on Roche as well. Yeah, I, I think he wants it from Roshan. It does have that egg limbs. It's It's a very strong item. But right now, Thompson, he's just having problems running in. Like, he's going in, getting a link, maybe two links, onto Nine, and Nine literally stands there and hits him. And, you know, Aghanims, it doesn't really help with that. I think he, he maybe he needs another plate mail or something, but I, I don't know how he... Like, Razor has to run in and commit, otherwise the hero doesn't work. Well, 44 minutes in, what could be one of the deciding fights? We've seen a couple of them so far happen in this back-and-forth game. Uh, between OG and Tundra, game number one of this five-game series. Uh, but now, Roche has spawned, OG are aware, Tundra are not. And they don't have great heroes for going to scout out what's going on in that area. We'll see if they sort of anticipate this or not, but these early Roche spawns, when you've got sort of vision in that pit and control of the area, it, it, it can really change things around and catch you off guard. Yeah, I think Tundra, they would have appreciated a little bit of a later spawn, because look at these wards. They're so beautiful, placed by OG, and all of Tundra's vision, you know, it's sort of on... I mean, they only have one wardo, but it's on the bottom side of the map. We also did just see the refresher finished by Tidehunter. Goes all in for this That's one. That's big. So buyback status right now, it's not very many. You've got it on Naga, you've got it on Marana, Razor, and Lina. Everybody else, no buyback, whether from the timeout or whether from gold. And I think we'll see this Roshan fight sort of determine how this game goes. This is going to be like the biggest objective for both teams. They really need Roshan. If Tundra get it, I think they're pretty secure in this game. And, you know, OG, they want to fight around this Roshan pit in the open. The other thing that I want to mention is Sumel has actually picked up his Aghanim Scepter on Nagasarn. I think this is probably one of the most underrated Aghanims in the game right now. We saw Ame use it to really great effect at the Animator, but it lets you net people during sleep and through BKB. So potentially, something that could happen is he can sleep all of Tundra, you know, Fada will stay outside the fight, and then Sumel can net him during the sleep to keep him away from his teammates so he can't get the ultimate off. Right. Like, you have a lot of cool plays you can do like that, you know? Maybe 3-3, three, three, he's, he's, you sleep and he BKBs, okay, you just net him during the BKB. And then now mm -hmm. you can 5v1 him because everyone else is asleep. Well, or there just might not be a fight at all. I mean, Roche after that starting. timing, I think Tundra are going to probably come and check out Roche, I would imagine. They, uh, they don't have any Roshan scout, though. Like, they have to commit uh, to a fight. Yeah, it's really... Oh, my God, Roche is going down. Do they have any inkling that this is going on? 3-3 three, three is up on the mm -hmm. high ground. He, he's got an opening here if they wanted to go check it, but I just don't think that they know. It's down. They're in there. Ward will drop. Does he jump after he spots the Roche Coast? Doesn't look like it. Oh man, what a huge gift and for OG right there. They still right have the there. ward here. They're going on to snaking. They're thinking about it at the very least. Stun is out there. Sumail up on the high ground. Fata, he's all alone right now. Oh, gotta be careful. Snaking throws out that stun. The try and attempt for the back away, but they already popped that borrow time. So Aghanim's gonna be completely useless now. And Thompson goes for the wraparound. Finds Fata, stealing all the damage. Three, three burrow strike. The turn though. Oh, nine. The chase down. They got him. The mail will drop once, but can they get. Oh, no, no, the buyback. Gets to get back into this one. Seb dropped down somewhat low. Can they find that finish? Snaking trying to move over into position. Fata TP's out, but they get the kill on Snaking. Oh, Seb ends up falling. They have the Aegis on buybacks. Thompson. Two buybacks on OG. Ravage used. And Tundra just convincingly win that fight. I honestly, I don't know how they won that fight. They completely, like, they had such a good idea. Okay, he has Agadons on Abaddon. We can just poke him until he uses ultimate. But they didn't combo their spells. Sleep wasn't used. Disrupt Royalty was sort of waiting for that sleep. They jump on Sumail. He doesn't get his BKB off. He dies. He's saving it for his buyback, but the fight's lost by then. You know, Thompson, he's popped his refresh orb already. And my goodness, it's just Tundra. Their team fighting just looks so superior during that engagement. I mean, and, and this was after, like, a really shaky early game from them. Like, th those couple of moves just felt so bizarre and, and not what we've seen from them previously. But now, all of a sudden, keep in mind, this was the Tidehunter that bought out for the refresher. Seb doesn't have buyback. They should know he has no buyback if they've clicked him. If you see a big item like refresher, 
especially on the null one position, you'll be like, yeah, this guy's committed. I don't think he's farmed an additional 3,000 gold he needs. Well, ready to walk up to high ground right now. Tundra knocking on the front door. They've already lost to Rax themselves, but there's another hero that takes them rather rapidly, and that is the Luna. Time and again, this hero has been able to pull it out when it seemed helpless. And Skidder doing it now in the grand finals. Do they stick around for more? Still 30 seconds with no tide. And I mean, his buyback was still on cooldown, but nonetheless, it looks like Tundra are going to take the more conservative approach, back out, claim the outpost, and then be ready to go for round number two in a bit. But a 10,000 gold lead back the other way. The, the thing about this game is, I don't think Tundra feel pressure to end this game. I mean, OG, they always have potential to clutch. You know, you have time to refresh. What the hell did I just say? <laughs> you have Tide Hunter with Refresher. You have Naga Siren Sleep with Aghanim Scepter on the Disruptor. Oh my god, what did I just say there? That was so weird. Good. Anyways. <laughs> but the brain melts like, when overall, we watch these I think, team fights. Yeah, these, this game's insane, and I don't think Tundra are feeling any pressure. Now they have another counter to the Disruptor Aghanims in the Wind Waker coming out from Lina. And, you know, Golden plus Wind Waker, pretty good versus Committal spells. Now, OG, again, if you can catch these guys out of position, they all have buyback on Tundra, but it can very quickly turn into a devastating loss, but they find one. Soxa able to get the leap out of there. Seb throws out some more of these gushes in the retreat. Snaking the has level life. 25. He took to 80 agility. He's going to be a beast. What? Okay. I mean, it's good. You get you get a lot of armor from it. So He's 31 it's armor. Yeah, it's a lot of armor. <laughs> and don't underestimate the late game Nick's right clicks. No joke. No cap. He does. He's hitting kind of hard there. Why not? Get an E blade maybe. Why not? But that is the dream. The other thing that's happening in these fights is, like snaking. He's just being such a nuisance. Like I think I've seen a couple times where the fights are happening and Seb or Sumail they just become auto mana because you know. The Nyx, as he progresses more into the game, he just becomes more and more annoying with your int scaling. That is a very frustrating component to it as well. They're trying to get to this next item now uh, with the Disruptor. He's going for a refresher. If you get to that, that would be huge. Sumail trying to get to the... Or it does have the Nullifier completed. Um, that one, Ooh. I'm not exactly sure what the, the main goal is. Uh, Ewels, I guess, and Wind Waker? Sorry, for who? Uh, I was the, talking the about Skinner. Nullifier. Yeah. Nullifier. For the, the Naga. Yeah, I think... I mean, it's for Aeon Discs, right? Okay. So you can burst right, people right. in the Disruptor OT. Skinner, he's picked up this Aegon Scepter. Ooh, Nullifier does change the situation a lot. I mean, combined with the Disruptor Aegonims... Tundra? Fight. This is so tense. They're very grouped up together. Scan will connect on the high ground. Aegis will expire. Pundra. The top lane is pressuring in. Mid also has double catapults. And you can see that OG just comfortable staying on this bottom side of the map here. They're trying to get towards the AC for the Razor. This 3-3 will eventually kill off this wave with the Sandstorm. Uh, but very, very tense. It's like that overwhelming team fight that you get from OG, but it feels like the heroes on Tundra just have more damage and they've got the healing that they need with Fada. The top Oji, they're, they're going high ground here. They want to force Tundra back to the base at the very least. And Good job pulling they got them a around. Glimpse on okay, okay. Minotaur Horn coming out. So has that on cooldown for another 30 seconds. Did we get any flickers in this game? Uh, nope, nobody's gonna free win. That's fine. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't think Flicker would be as impactful in this type of game. It's like the team fights are too, um, like they're too sudden with big AoEs. Like, Flicker's really good when the team fights get really spaced out and you know, you can out maneuver people. I also want to mention, well, while OG were trying to force Tundra back to base, Tundra did go back, but Skidder actually managed to pick up an illusion rune, and you can sort of see, like, mid and top lane, they push in super hard. Now they're smoking up because they have the additional map pressure. Nine can push in bottom, travels in. They have Ags now on 3-3, spot Seb there. Doesn't decide to go yet, that is not the target that you want to try and burst. And Holy they are for waiting for somebody to show. Gem bought by 
the Naga. Seb's still up on the high ground. He's just being this wall in front of the rest of the team. I think they know exactly where all of, of Tundra is. And with those Naga Siren illusions, it's going to be able to push the super creeps back again and not get a free creep wave in. 3-3 looking for somebody here. Uh, that ward plays just outside of Sentry Vision. Okay, so for Abaddon, he's picked up the Holy Locket, which means that he heals around 420 HP per 525 taken. So effectively, like an 80, 82% damage reduction coming out to his allies. Uh, that's that's a lot of damage reduction, keeping his allies alive. And Oh, they caught 33. the glimpse here. He missed another Burl Strike on it. Oh, but the blink out after the Yules. Well played. So 3-3, able to get away from that catch. And again, OG, after leading, that lead vanished quickly off the back of some solid Tundra plays, now trying to pull themselves back into this blink forward from Seb. Yeah, they, saying, saw, fight me. they saw they saw Lina TP top to deal with the wave, so immediately they want to start the fight. There Deep is some pretty scary plays from Tundra, though. If they get some stuns combined with this Luna OT, he's gone for every Luna um, except the stun one, which makes sense. He has so many stuns on his team. He wants that Lysio to man fight. He doesn't have Satanic or anything. You can potentially burst, I think, anyone on the OG side. And he's 18 beams at 400 damage each. It's more than a little bit. And again, 8,500 gold right now uh, onto Skitter, trying to figure out what else he wants to get. Maybe a moon chart or something, but it's going to be a smoke up. No, G, they're holding this high ground. They have good vision in the area. Fada is going to walk up that hill. 33 jump. Shivas catches onto one. Disruptor. It's not a bad one to get the Ag Scepter afterwards. Not going to do enough damage. Song the of the Clips Siren misses. comes out. And the slow. They have great vision here. Fada drops one up as he tries to walk up to the high ground. Tops in. Going to have that BKB out. Fada ulti popped. They get the glimpse. And then Fada with the walk away. Things getting very awkward right now. Do Tundra want to stick around for any more? Good stun. LSA afterwards. Going to connect now. Trying to bring down Thompson, but great four step. Keeping him alive. Laguna Blade not going to be enough for that kill. Skitter, Fada over there on the east side of the engagement. 3-3. Three, three, trying to turn on Sumail now. Able to find that long range stun from the Nyx Assassin, but they get the BKB off. Ravage afterwards. Going to connect on the two heroes. These big ultis not really getting where they need to be from OG and No Tail just gets exploded. Thompson pops the refresher. Second round Ravage. Do they have enough now? They take down one. Lena dead. Skitter still standing up on that high ground. Burrow strike and impale trying to connect, but another four staff coming from Soxa. Seb trying to live. They get a good stun there onto Skitter. Fada, Fodic shield. Back away. And another round of these weird back and forth fights. Nine buys in back. Roshan is up in 10 seconds. Radiant Ooh, oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this read from Seb here, though. He, he knows that, guys, we need pressure on the map because they're going to get Roshan. We can't fight them right now. I only have zero Ravages. I mean, Ravages on a 30 second cooldown because, you know, it's a 74 second cooldown when he's Arcane Blade. That's reasonable. But Roshan, it, it's going down fast. As soon as Nine begins to hit this, are they, are they scared right uh, now? Well, they, they saw Naga Illusions coming in, and obviously you don't okay. know if it's the real one or not. So Seb, he's stepping forward. This could potentially be all of it. You got to be so wary. This is Ags, Refresher, Aegis, Cheese, everything. 10 There's seconds on Ravage. They get the AC done right now. Jump, they found No-Tail. He already bought back. Gets the ulti up, but now trying to get away, but the BKB is the chase down. They find the stun. They get the kill. There is no Static Storm in this fight, but the Ravage, is that going to be enough? Nine, he got his BKB off, right-clicking Seb to death, as he too will fall. Does have buyback, but he doesn't have a Ravage afterwards. Will have Refresher in 10, but this looks like it's going to be Tundra's Roche. And, you know, I'm sitting here with my full information, wondering why they're not doing Roshan. Of course, they have a Naga Siren. They're going to sleep the Roshan, clearly showing why I'm analyzing the game and they're playing in these finals. Because that's just that's just insane. I would have went for that Roshan, lost the game. Tundra, cool-headed, despite all the pressure, despite this game being so hard from the start, they're making really good decisions. They secure the Roshan, they secure the team fight, and therefore it looks like they might be on their way to securing this game. Yo, uh, they forgot that you don't get vision in the Roche because they sent the courier in Wait. to pick up the refresher shard. There's uh, a... And they don't have it. 
Yeah. That seems like a really good item, Lyrical. <laughs> I, I feel like some heroes could use that this game. I, Sand King sent in his courier to get it, but I think that they lost vision and he had like shift queued it to go back, so they don't have that refresher. Mm. You're I mean, Dota. Uh, <laughs> the, these things get wild. <laughs> Also, three minutes away. We're almost at that hour mark. The jump forward, though, will we reach it? Tops in, pops the BKB. They back out on Tundra as the buyback came from Seb. Minotaur Horn, already used. BKBs, you have them available on Tundra. Fada still has ulti. Static Storm will be up when No Tail's up. And they'll have the Song of the Siren if Tundra stick too close together. Do Tundra want to push this? I mean, uh, the triple arrow goes out, connect there onto nine, but Fada's on cleanup duty. As Snake King preps himself for the pressure. Down bottom, Seb was keeping that lane pushed in. And they're gonna have to deal with that potentially. As the arrow will go out. A big creep wave coming in top. As another one comes in mid, but they break the backdoor protection. And now moving up towards this high ground, trying to take a tier three tower with the slow siege coming from nine. Arrow, a little bit off the mark there again. Look at this positioning. They dropped the Static Storm right onto Snake King alone, trying to kill him off. He's down low and going to fall. But afterwards, the Burrow Strike kills off No-Tail. Looking for more, they fought back on Nyx. Ravage gonna connect onto three. They back away on three, three, trying to escape from that link. Managed to do it. No more refresher. Second Ravage though, takes down Fada. No ulti, Skinner dropping down low. Can he lift up? Oh, the Satanic. Doing so much work, keeping him alive. The turn now onto Sumail. Snake King moves in, finds the stun, gets the vendetta hit, gets the kill. They don't have a creep wave right now, and they're pressuring it out. 3-3, three, three, TP's in on it, and that's going to keep it alive as 9 gets turned on. Still has that Aegis, though. So he's going to go down once here, most likely, although maybe not. 3-3, three, three, turning, right click, tops in dead, ultra kill for 9 as he dies. And now, eyes on the prize. Tundra wanting to take this game number one. Do they have enough in the tank? Arrow goes out, gonna connect on to that Nyx Assassin, down low. Song of the Siren afterwards. But what do they have? They don't have the Static Storm. This would have been perfect, but no Arrow's tail is dead. Seconds. Arrow not gonna come out. It connects there onto Snake King, but they turn now, trying to bring down Thompson. No more BKB left. 3-3 three, three, drop in low, but Fada ulti out keeping him survivable. Skinner turns onto the Ancient, and the throne will go down. Tundra, take game number one. Nani? <laughs> <laughs> no, Tundra, they just, they're down so much gold, so many.